Cheers, hello, hello, hello to everybody. I'm early, so do your thing. Do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Ignore me completely. I mean, that's an option. And um, and I'll wait for everybody to catch up. Hello to those joining. I'm Now, I would just like to say, because every week someone says, look, she's absolutely off her face. I'm not. I'm just beginning to drink this. This was yesterday's. You know, when you answer the questions at the doctor's, and they say, oh, you know, I don't know why I have to put this voice on. Um, oh, hello. Thank you, everybody, for being so sweet and for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to join. I hope you brought your sense of humour or if you're feeling pissed off, that'll be good as well. And also a drink. If you haven't got a drink, but you think there's one in a cupboard somewhere, go and grab it. And if there's no alcohol in the house because you can't even afford to live anymore, I don't know the answer. Just get some pickle juice out of the cupboard. Start drinking pickled onion juice. Whatever happens, the end will come sooner. <laughs> so, what was I going to say? Oh yes, when you go to the doctors or something and they say, so, you know, do you drink? And you go, oh, you know, no. <laughs> do you smoke? Oh, no. <laughs> and like, <laughs> if you want to say, oh, how the chuffing hell else do you think any of us have made it? through the last two years. Yes, I drink. <laughs> you should see my recycling. I've had to get another box. <laughs> I'd be ashamed, but I don't really give a shit, so it's fine. Um, how is everyone doing? Cooking dinner and drinking wine. You see, that's the way, that's the way. And although we're being persecuted and we will not be able to afford to even eat by mid-August, that can only mean that we drink more now, my loves. We may have to, maybe barefoot now is financially out of reach for us. And I will go amongst the supermarkets and maybe that will be the Katie's Arms. I'll find the cheapest, shittiest red wine. Even if we have to hold our noses to get it down, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> that will be the sacrifice. Can we noodle? Honestly, when you tell me um, these things, can we noodle? I must have, so I told you about noodling. That that's what my husband and I call it in front of the children, having a noodle. <laughs> no, we can't noodle because if I noodle someone else, I'll end up unmarried again or someone will put it on the papers or whatever. Um, lots of things to talk about this week. But first, one second. I'm going to, oh no, it's not a vape. It's my um, Sharpie, although I have a vape story. And I would actually go and get the thing I want to talk about. One of my children, I believe, is a vapour. And you can imagine, that is not okay. And that is not something I permit. Can you even, can you even conceive of it? Um, and so I have a, a little carton now, which is what I was going to go and get for you, by the back door. And I've said that it's for anything I wouldn't approve of that you think you're going to bring into the house. So I now tell my children they have to leave in the carton anything that they think I wouldn't approve of them bringing in the house. And what you'll notice about that is it's quite, thank you, thank you for the lobsters. Thank you, I know, it's tremendous, isn't it? And look, it's so long. Look, I could wear it as a dress if I wasn't already 110 years old. So the idea of saying, if there's anything you shouldn't be bringing into the house, you leave in that carton it means there's a sort of passive aggressive there's a sort of malevolence there isn't there there's a sort of menace a threat but without a threat so that's my vaping story um <laughs> loving the lobster look you silly goofy lady i know but i think that's what we need more of isn't it and um, when people read not trying to push my book i was looking to see whether there's a copy of it help there's a funny story as well of something i've got just here to show you <laughs> and it's making me giggle inside every time I look up um yes the um every time so when people say about help the book the thing they kind of seem to like about it is that I um so they people say thanks for sharing you know um thanks for sharing all that without hiding anything <laughs> which I think is kind of code speak for you overshared which I did and that I have so many terrible things that I've overshared and people are surprised by that because, of course, everybody on TV now has to be, you know, Little Miss Perfect Pants and Saccharine Sweet. And we know that's bullshit. Like this whole, you know, Tess Daly, 
Claudia thing. We're so nice all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, we know that's bullshit. Right, it'd be much better if people come on and go, I'm pissed off because this happened. Or my husband's getting on my tits. But no one does that. They just go, oh, yeah, so great. Yeah. Uh, oh, what a load of old bull. Anyway, have I had a few tonight? No, not one. This is my first drink. This is just how I am when I'm doing Katie's Arms or chatting to friends or out and about or doing stand-up. <laughs> this is normal me when I'm chatting sober. What did I want to tell you about? Yes, my week has been a week of good deeds. And I have one, two, three that I want to share. Number one, I went and had my teeth cleaned. Mm? Um, but at, at the official dentist, where you have to go and pay, because of course no one on the NHS can see anyone anymore because they've shut down their services so that all of our teeth fall out. So that at the point we can't afford to have food anymore, at least we can look, sup soup through a straw because all our teeth fell out anyway, because no one had any dentistry during lockdown and still can't. Anyway, I went to have my teeth cleaned at a place where you have to pay for such a thing. And I have not had my teeth cleaned for 20 years. So I went to see the lady whom I love because she used to work in prisons. And I love prison wardens. I love people that work in prisons. Um, I, I wouldn't mind being a prison officer myself. I think it would be a right laugh. And actually the prison governors I've met, I mean, I know it's a bag of shit, but I quite like the idea that you'd be like, stop doing that or I'll kick your head in. Um, the prison governors that I've met have all been really sound. Most of them expect to see me at some point in my life and I'm still fairly sure that will happen. But anyway, I haven't had my teeth cleaned properly. 20 years, are you joking? No, not at all. Um, because the last time I had them properly cleaned, it was in New York when I used to live there and the butchery that went on to my face, I came out of there and I swore I would never go back to such butchery again. Literally, as dripping blood from my head, like a vampire, it's just like Ugh. So I swore I wouldn't. But this lady used to do the teeth for prisoners, so I felt that she would be up to the job of seeing my horse face teeth. And she told me that compared to prisoners, my teeth weren't too bad. And I believe, my darlings, um, that you always have to kind of search for the compliment so never think, oh, she just compared me to the prisoners. I bet they have shit teeth. You have to think, oh, I've got better teeth than prisoners. Very good. So that was my one good deed. And because I did that, it was like going for a smear test, right? And so I was like, mm. it's like going to confession or doing something. Maybe for like men, it's like having your prostate checked, right? It's something you don't really want to do, but I went and did. So I was like, yes, I've had that done. My old dentist, by the way, I think was actually a paedophile. I'm just saying. He never did anything particularly dodgy to me, but he always used to do dentistry with his hands um, without any gloves on. And I can remember the smell of his finger hair when he used to be in my mouth. <laughs> I think he was also the local vet. So he'd probably been up a cow's arse and then was in my face, which, but I could, I could still give, have the feeling of his knuckle hair in my, on the bottom of my nose, and my nose is big, and I could still smell the dentist's fingers. And that's not an expression you want to know in your life, but it was a lot of hand in my mouth. Uh, uh. So that's not good. Smear tests, just while we're on that subject. Were we on that subject? Smear tests are always a concern, and ladies will understand this. Men might too. I don't know, maybe you're trans and you go for a smear test. Um, Actually, on that note, when trans people go for a smear test, the doctor, the instruction in the NHS is that you are to perform the smear test as if you're performing a smear test. So presumably you get amongst it, pull the, you know, balls to the side and just sort of, I don't know, I don't know where you put the scraper that you're supposed to, if you're a doctor, and someone may be, Somebody might be able to confirm this for me, but if a trans person comes to have a smear test, my understanding is you have to perform the smear test. And so I don't know. <laughs> and for men that don't know, when we have a smear test, they have like a stick. It'd be like, um, what do you call those things? <laughs> I, this also brings back memories as well for a gentleman that I once tried to have. And, you know, it's essentially a tunnel 
down there. And so the whole pencil penis thing. Mother, if you're watching this, please go away. Please go away. But I did once try and go through with that. Um, that's in help as well. But yes, so a smear test is basically like um, like those brushes you go in between your teeth with or a brush that you use to bottle, wash in a bottle with a bristle head, or if you imagine a very, very small version of a toilet brush, not that men know what toilet brushes are. Um, that's what they do a smear test with. And then they wang it up and then they have to <laughs> woo, shuffle it back. If I was doing a smear test, that's totally what I would do. This. <laughs> and then they pull out all of, the, all of your innards on the end of this toilet brush and they go, and that will tell you whether you're going to die or not. Um, what I would say about the smear test is, you need to meet my mother. You do bloody not need to meet my mother. Um, what I say about the smear test is, you sort of want to prepare for the smear test, right? You don't want them to be greeted with anything that's like, hasn't been in a shower. So you get the shower head, if you can get it off, and you, woo you hose upwards, and you just do a little leg standard party thing, and you, whoop, 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 so you, you give it a good rinse out, a bit of fairy liquid, probably a bit drying, but what you, and you want to have a little, maybe a little trim, maybe, or a little shape, but what you don't want to be is like over-prepared, because there's been times I've been like applying, you know, smelly moisturiser to my bits, and then I thought, this is too far, isn't it? This is like over-preparation, like as if you're trying to impress the smear test nurse. No, no one else, just me. Okay, well, I basically went in there with my vagina smelling of roses, Joe Malone. I should have gone in with a candle as well. <laughs> Let me just add to the ambiance. <laughs> now you'll find my rose scented vagina. I hope it's what you wanted. <laughs> I don't know how I got onto that. We were talking about the dentist. So not only did I go to the dentist, I also went to the dump. It's such a great dump. Um, with my husband, lovely Mark. We all know lovely Mark. <laughs> Someone here just said, what am I even watching? You're watching Katie Hopkins, who's banned from everywhere in the UK, talk about her smear test and how she overly prepared her vagina in order to impress the nurse. <laughs> and thought about taking a Joe Malone candle with me just to add to the ambiance. That's what you're watching. If you don't like it, off to piss. <sighs> There's nothing better on TV than me. I know that for a fact. I also know if I was on TV, everyone's lives would be better because we'd be doing this across the nation, mostly laughing at me and having a bit of a just kick back and forget all the bad news shit you're being fed or some lame ass comedy that's pre-prepared and pre-recorded or some shitty lefty banging on about something right on with his small disabled mates, whatever. I'd just be a lot funnier, but obviously I can't be anywhere in case I say something outrageous like British people ought to be looked after first before we look after any other bastards. I know, can't say that, can you? Um, so the other thing I did, yes, I went to the dump with lovely Mark, mm. which basically involves putting things in large bags and taking them to this place where men in fluorescent outfits shout at you for using the wrong bit of what they call the dump. Back in the day, there used to be this fuck off great pile and you used to just open your car and it was brilliant and you just went whoomph, whoomph, like small child, boom, hamster that I don't want anymore, Fum, goldfish, fuck them. Fum, first husband. Fum, you used to be able to just dump your shit there and piss off. But now, oh no, it's like being OCD. OCD, there's this thing here, and you're allowed to put this thing here, but you're only allowed to put this thing there. And if you come out carrying this thing, and it's not that thing, but it has got a plug, you have to go over there. But it's this thing, but it's not that thing, but it's definitely not this, but it might be wood. Knock, 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 knock. Yes, that's wood. You can go there at all times they're watching you which which literally i just i just want to go mm, i'm trying to dump some crap stop being ocd stop being so anally retentive you man in fluoro get a freaking life but i didn't and instead was watching the final 
of The Apprentice when I fired Lord Sugar. Fuck me. I wish we'd had cameras, my cameras, with us that day and in the car park after, or in the car park outside where they filmed that shit with all of the production team coming out going, what the fuck has she just done? Get back in there and change your fucking mind. So anyway, that's how the dump, so it went to the dentist, I went to the dump and then, yes, I sort of rescued someone's dog because the dog up the road has got dementia and it's a small, ugly thing like this. Like, it's like a bit smelly. It looks a bit like a hamster that someone just stuck a bike pump up its arse. And <laughs> so it's like this. It's an ugly bastard thing. It's missing most of its hair. It smells a bit. And it kind of uh, goes around this lane here and just shits wherever it wants because it's not all there. Like, it's totally not all there. And so we see it wandering about. And as long as we don't run it over, it's fine. But occasionally a do-gooder will come through the village and we'll see the uh, demented, oh, don't get me going with that. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things I could tell you that I can't tell you here. We'll have to wait till Blackpool. <laughs> there's, there's just, there's something I'm desperate to say, but I will be arrested. Um, the dog's like, uh, and so um, someone grabbed it by the collar. I was driving out and they were like, do you know whose dog this is? And I want to say, no, I've never seen it before in my life. But because I'm calm, because I'm, you know, I feel people's pain, I feel people's hurt. Like, I can't leave someone. I have to solve or rescue people because it's what I'm built like. And I'm like, yes, I know whose dog that is. And instead of saying they live up there, I said, don't worry, I'll sort it. Put on my handbrake. And then instead of like just getting dementia dog and just like giving him a little off, you, you know, whoop, whoop, I took him home. I didn't even want to do it. I felt like I had to. No, I can't do Joey Deacon. When am I on in Blackpool? Uh, 14th, 15th, 16th of May. First time on a stage in the UK for five years, having been cancelled from everything and had everything taken. My home, came from my kids, my job, came from my head, did a play about my assassination, got me removed from everything and they still come for me. Uh, I'll be on stage in Blackpool. And then because the first night sold out, they booked two more. Um, so I, I can't really think about it because it's really emotional for me because I've been abroad performing because I can still speak in the States. But the idea that I'll be able to come back and speak to my people and we'll all just be... An, and, I'll, and much more important than me being on a stage, which I honestly is neither here nor there, is that that room of people will all know when they... And I've seen this happen every time. People walk in and their shoulders drop and they, it's almost like everyone knows that everyone in that room just wants them to be all right. And it doesn't matter what you say or think or do or how you walk or what you wear or how you look or what religion you are or color you are or anything, nothing matters. You just want everyone to be all right and everyone will be just darling to everybody. And I know it and I know it. And it, and it you see, look, it sets me off because that's the stuff we need to go back to. So <clears throat> anyway, I must move on to this because I have to show you what has been here the whole time. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's have some guesses. Didn't know dogs could have dementia. Oh, huh. let me take my phone and video the little demented old bastard as he stumbles <laughs> around the lane. He knows well enough to go down the road. He knows well enough to take himself home when he wants. Oh, but if he sees someone coming, he does this, I'm so lost, oh, oh, oh. God, I guess that's what old people do, isn't it? Desperate for sympathy. <laughs> this will be it now, won't it? Hopkins, Hopkins humiliate dementia sufferers. Here we go. This is what I've been looking at the whole time we've been talking. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my nan. And it isn't someone I've butchered and vacuum sealed. Although, this week, that has crossed my mind a number of times. You know when they say, oh, so-and-so, this dead man was found in someone's freezer. I do have those thoughts. I do have those thoughts. I do think, do you know what? I could just put them in a freezer, vacuum. I could do that with the dementia dog, couldn't I? Just chuck it in my chest freezer. Vacuum pack it. 
probably get me in the ship with the RSPCA because that footballer that kicked the cat, he's been completely done over. So I'm guessing if they found dementia dog in my de- chest feed, freezer. <laughs> anyway, this <laughs> is, no, it's not dog food. How rude. <laughs> this is a joint of lamb, my darlings. In fact, it's a, it's a whole lamb shoulder. Mm. And it's for my mothering Sunday. <laughs> whole lamb shoulder I will slow cook it for 45 hours but basically somewhere out there in the fields my darling where I run with the lions looks a bit, oh someone just said is that Boris well there's not enough fat on it darlings for it to be Boris is there and probably this vacuum packed lamb shoulder has more intelligence doesn't it than Boris Johnson if I ever see that boy I'm giving him a kick in the nuts if he has some like this now since Carrie came along like this. And also, have you noticed how fat he's getting? Oh, if she's going anywhere near that, she has to, I reckon she has to lift up the apron in order to get under there. Don't you reckon? I reckon she's doing some work with that whole fat, with that whole fat apron pushed on her face like that while she's trying to suck him to get some more, I don't know, curtains. Anyway, I'm cooking shoulder of lamb for my Mother's Day dinner. It's actually going to be at lunchtime because mum and dad don't like to eat late because they get reflux. <laughs> oh, can't eat after four o'clock. <laughs> so if you lie down, oh, it all, it all comes back up. It's all acid, acid. Oh, burns. It burns. Uh, uh. <laughs> anyway, somewhere in the fields out there, there's a lamb walking around missing a whole shoulder. So I've literally got its shoulder here. The lamb must be really pissed off. He's like, ah, that silly cow. <laughs> Slice off his shoulder. The other thing I think, which is important to note, is that being a lamb is a real win-lose situation, right? Because there is December lambs. You may know this, you may not. You may not be like a country person like my good self. December winter lambs, winter lambing, blah, blah, blah. And then there's spring lambs and it was lambing day, I think, a week ago. And you've heard them all, probably seen them in the fields, maybe. Do you even live near a field? I don't know. If you're from Birmingham, you won't be watching this anyway, will you? Because it's hardly my fan club. So lambs, if you get born in the winter ones, it's like shit. It's raining all the time. It's miserable. Minus two. Your lambs are being like ah, carted off by wolves in the night. And so it's terrible. And, and then you end up as this, because that would be about their lifetime, right? You end up as Mother's Day lunch. But if you're a spring lamb and you get born like 20 minutes ago, you get spring, sunshine, daffodils, grass growing. They are made up. All I'm saying is if I ever come back as a lamb, I definitely want to be a spring lamb. And if I come back as a winter lamb, I'd be so pissed off because that means you know you've been shut on. I'm near Birmingham and I'm a big fan. Oh, I apologise. Thank you. Thank you for being there. There are good people in Birmingham too. I know. As well as the assholes. Um, yes, yeah, so that's what me, my mothering Sunday and I'm cooking for whoever wants to come. And today I, this is another thing I've done. I've just literally, I've literally, someone just said it's commercial racket. Oh, you miserable bastard. Piss, offity piss, darling. It's not a commercial racket. It's a cool day. My mum will come over. I can give her her new sunnies. Oh, imagine how exciting. I'm going to cook the lamb. It's cool. Then when my mum's no longer here, I'll be able to like, yay, I did a good thing. And then because the lions, Tilda and Stella, ate... A lot of my dining room table and the chairs. Today I've had them out in the sunshine. I've sanded them down, washed them over. Boom. Mother's Day lunch. It's going to be perfect. So that would be Mothering Sunday. Now, what did I want to tell you about? Oh yes, I needed to tell you um, about the lions. One of them, Stella, is doing a thing where she's what they call in heat. I did not know there was such a thing with a dog. I mean, I'd heard of it and I'm supposed to be vaguely a woman. So I understand there is a thing where you are in heat. 
but my dog was doing that. She is that in heat. And it means you have to have them like on a lead in order that they just don't go up and roger anyone they see. And it also means like their nipples are like massive. And on a dog like a Labrador, you may not want to know this, um, the, the dog's bits when they're in heat are literally huge. They're like, they're like what's she called? Kardashian. They're a bit like Kim Kardashian's lips, but bigger. Mm -mm. Hold on. Mm. Mm -mm. That was quite a lot of spit. So, so the dog's bits, when they're in heat, literally swell up. Like they've been stung by an entire, entire nest of bees. And as she's running away from me, before they were all like with all their little bits all properly where they're but I'm assuming where they're supposed to be and now Stella's bits are like it's like the inflatable castle you get when you know the bouncy castle basically looks like she's got a bouncy castle for a vagina and and it's just like so when I go walking or running with her it's like flapping about and that's done on purpose so that other dogs can see this enormous vagina and think, oh, mm, I'll go and have a go there. Which I am kind of like, that is not, I didn't know someone could have mentioned, couldn't they? That, that It's quite embarrassing. And I was out the other day and a gentleman who was a bit rah, rah, rah with his dog called Rillo. Oh, Rillo, oh, Rillo, Rillo, come here. Oh, good dog. Oh, Rillo, Rillo, hi. I was walking, because I'd held on to Stella so that she didn't, bang Rolo relentlessly and then I was walking away and he goes excuse me not like that hold on excuse me is your dog in heat he shouted that across a field I just I just that's a bit like saying excuse me are you on your period are you, are you on your period and I was like um well yes she is <laughs> can you not tell by the fact that her vagina is the size of an inflatable bus <laughs> Hey, right, yeah. Hey, that's great. That's great. And I was like, is it great? I don't see the great. This is disgusting. And he goes, yeah, no, it's great because Rolo has just been chipped and he's not even interested in the slightest. So that's that's fantastic for Rolo. So I'm assuming Rolo's male and has had some kind of implant to stop him, like, <clears throat> beasting every woman he sees. Either that or he's just learnt from his owner how to be incredibly emasculated. And I went... Oh, right, yeah, great. <laughs> and I walked off thinking, oh, God, people are really a lot, aren't they? So, <laughs> well, we're, no, no, we're, we're thinking of keeping her with this inflatable vagina so that eventually I've said they're going to have puppies and I've said that that's because they have to buy me a pissing new, what is some people would call a conservatory, I'd call an extra bit with a bit of glass on it and a table and a chair what else have they eaten of mine well just basically pay for them themselves you know so they can have puppies but i'm not sure how much of this inflatable vagina i can take okay um we have four minutes my darlings so i'm going to stop talking and listen to you hmm? Hmm. follow me i don't follow people because otherwise then you follow one person, then you have to follow 40,000. And I do honestly read comments and I try and be as engaged as I can. Although admittedly last week I didn't realise, no, the week before I didn't realise we'd lost sound until about half an hour after we'd lost sound. Um, matey me, I think you mean marry me. I can't marry you. And also we know, anybody at Katie's Arms know, knows that I'm terrible to live with. And I have a varicose vein on my shin. So unattractive. And actually in the car today, I was wearing my shorts with my knee-high socks. It's quite the look. I realised that that varicose vein is now showing itself at the top of my leg. <clears throat> so you don't want to marry me. Um, where is it in Blackpool? It's on the pier, my darling. Um, North Pier. I need to put some details up, don't I? I need to do things like promote. Uh, it's on the North Pier, uh, 14th, 15th, 16th of May. And we've just had confirmation for um, Wales. <laughs> I just don't know that that's going to happen, really. But I've had confirmation. I'm banned from schools in Wales. I'm banned by the Welsh government. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, it will be great to be there. Um, 
I do, I want to come to Southport. I want, all I want to do is tour around the UK on stages to bring our people together so that you can be in a room with a thousand people who wish you well. That's what I want to do. I will, I will, <laughs> how many fingers am I holding up? Two, obviously. Um, I will come to any theater that will have me. I don't give a shit about the money. I just want people to come and have a lovely night out and remind yourselves you're not on your own and great British people, no matter where you come from, you know, where, where your background is, I don't give a shit. If you're a great British person, that's what I want this to be. Thoughts on Whoopi Goldberg? What a twat Whoopi Goldberg is. What a twat. I thought she was vaguely funny when she was pretending to be a nun that could sing. And now, if I could grip her by the nipples and twist them 360, I absolutely would. And she'd say I did it because I'm racist. But no, I'd be doing it because she's a complete twat. And that's the problem with people using skin colour to define arguments. Skin colour has nothing to do with it. I can be a twat, she's being a twat. It's not to do with being black or white, she's being a twat. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> York, please. Well, exactly. You see, I could just be on the road, like Jason Manford, but, you know, funny and well-groomed, and we could have giggles all the time. I'd be so happy. Um, Leicester, come to Leicester. Imagine that. That'd be so fun. See, this is it. I've even had lovely Mark. He said he'll get us a van and he'll drive me about. Oh, how fun would that be? And then we'd have a bed in the back and we could noodle in between shows and then I could tell you all about it and how it went when we saw each other. Ah, oh, I could bring the lions, leave the children. Be fabulous. Oh, I sorted out the toothbrushes as well. Uh, Liverpool loves you. Oh, that's so not You guys are so great to me. You're so great to me. Um, Exeter, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> So, uh, yes, we're at the end of Katie's Arms. Thank you. Um, I meant to say thank you. That's what I wanted to also. I'm slightly put off by the fact that I've got a sodding great shoulder of lamb still here. <laughs> so, listen, there were some things I wanted to say. I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who um, is super kind and says kind things. But it doesn't matter if you didn't. And thanks for all the emails, especially people who email me just to offload because they had no one else to tell. And my email is katie at katiehopkins.co.uk. And I do try and respond. I do get there in the end. And please know, I read your emails. And please know that you aren't on your own. And you mustn't worry. I promise you. You mustn't worry. Because worrying, honestly, is, is absolutely loading something onto your back and carrying it round. So like worry or what someone else thinks or am I to this, or am I to that, or did she mean that when she said that, or did she mean that, and what was she meaning by that? Try and push that away. And anybody who upsets you, even if they didn't mean to upset you, or they don't mean to be upsetting, but maybe you're jealous of something they're doing, or jealous of their ease of their life, or whatever, just pull away from it. It might not be entirely like reasonable, but just pull away, because the most important thing is that you protect yourself. Because in order to do all the things we need to do, go to the dentist, go to the dump, look after someone else's demented dog, have your mum around or not, or any of the things, even to function, you have to look after yourself. And to look after yourself now is about preserving yourself. So just like on those really, 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 really boring, which I never listen to, the safety thing, because you know very well if the plane's going down, no fucker's getting out alive. And it took 55 hours to get people on board calmly. They ain't getting off the plane. <laughs> but those safety briefings, you have a safety briefing for your own life, right? You know, gas mask or the mask and the thing and the inflatable and the whistle. and the... Think like that about yourself. How do you get through the day when you go to bed to sleep even if you can't sleep, have a discipline. No big thoughts, right? Just make it a rule. As soon as your brain starts going, but what about, but what about, she said that, I'm not sure I've got, what did he do? Why was it like that? What, why aren't they including me? Why am I left out of this? Why do I feel like shit? No big thoughts in the darkness. You're not allowed to have big thoughts in darkness. Hmm? And the other thing is first thing in the morning, I have a rule, because otherwise I'm awake at 4 a.m. thinking, no big thoughts before coffee which means I have to get my ass downstairs and drink coffee before I'm allowed to have a big thought. <laughs> and that means anything that'd be like, I don't think I can do that. I'm not sure if that'd be okay. Will that be good enough? Am I good enough? Will this be fine? You don't have the, no big thoughts before coffee, no big thoughts in the darkness. You have to wait for the daylight. 
um, and you have to look after yourself. And if you can't, email me and I will remind you, you have to look after yourself. Okay, good. Um, good. I'm going to go and put the lamb in the fridge. <laughs> so if I food poison all my family, that will be shit. Um, and I will see you next week. I will still be in the UK for a few more weeks. I'm going to go and do a road trip uh, to help raise the rebel armies of America because we will rely on them one day for hope uh, because they have their second amendment and because they have their guns they will outlast the rest of us uh, but then I will be back and we will I will post also details of Blackpool and I will also post details of Wales <laughs> and um and I'll see you here at the Katie's Arms next week and look after yourselves and uh, try not to worry I know you might not know how you're going to get through I don't think many of us do, uh, but we are going to, uh, and we will prevail, and uh, and I'm going to make sure of it. Okay, so um, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for being here uh, at the Katie's Arms. <laughs>